Our next guest is a man you won't be surprised to learn that we've been keen to chat to for a long time, Mark Morano. Mark was a communications director in the Bush administration, and when he was at Cybercast News Service, he was the first to publish the accusations from Swift Boat veterans that John Kerry had allegedly exaggerated his military service record. Well, what about, but to bubble, Mark is known as one of America's chief, wait for it, cover your ears and eyes, kiddies, climate deniers. Oof, an accusation that is as absurd as it is illogical. Mark was one of the first to break the story, later picked up by James Dellingpole about the climate change email scandal in Britain, and he set up the Climate Depot website, which I urge you to check out, which has from time to time provided excellent material for this show's Ice Age Watch. He's most famous for his film Climate Hustle, exposing the climate change cult and the climate change hoax, and now he has its sequel, brilliantly and imaginatively titled Climate Hustle 2. Mark Morano, welcome to Outsiders. How are you, mate? Thank you very much, Rowan. I'm happy to be here. Appreciate it. We're happy to have you too. So tell us uh, briefly about the film, uh, Climate Hustle 2, the response to it, the key things in it, the, why people should watch it. Thank you. Um, the film came out in September of this year. We were originally set for nearly 800 theaters in the U.S. and Canada before the COVID restrictions locked down all the movies. Last uh, Earth Day, we were going to release it in April. And the film, our first film in 2016, which was in over 400 theaters, that dealt with the science of climate change. We, we took a deep dive into whether carbon dioxide was a control knob of the climate. We went through all the extreme weather claims. We had UN scientists who turned against the UN testifying. We talked about intimidation of scientists. In Climate Hustle 2, we actually talked about the agenda behind the UN IPCC climate panel, behind the Green New Deal, behind this whole multi-trillion dollar climate campaign to essentially control what we exhale from our mouth. And that is a much different film than the first one because we get in, we go behind the scenes. We actually went to Czech Republic, interviewed former President Václav Klaus, who says the climate agenda is the greatest threat to liberty since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the uh, Eastern Bloc of the Soviet Union, and the whole Soviet Union collapsed. So it's not about controlling the climate, it's about controlling us. And that's what we reveal in this film. Rita. Well, is there anybody who is getting uh, rich from the push to embrace renewables? Is there money to be made, with, particularly with governments investing billions in, in renewables? Yes. Well, first of all, it's an ideology. So, uh, you know, a lot of the lower end, the middle and lower end are people who believe in the cause. But you're absolutely, people are making a fortune. We'll start with Al Gore, $100 million when he left, I'm sorry, he had one to $2 million when he left the vice presidency in 2001. Fast forward about eight years, he's worth $100 million. Fast forward again, and he's actually now in the fake meat business. He's tied himself in. The idea is that we can't eat meat anymore. We can't eat real meat. Now we're looking at all sorts of synthetic and fake meats. That because of the climate, the U he timed his IPO to his company Beyond Meat to a uh, UN climate UN meat eating report banning it. Al Gore was one of the largest IPOs in the history of IPOs. He's he's on a quest to be the world's first fake meat billionaire based on the climate scare. That's one example. Uh, and then, of course, I go through, and, and I have a book out as well on this, but just the scientists who've won awards of hundreds of thousands of dollars, people like James Hansen, the former NASA scientist, who got who's literally protested global warming, been arrested half a dozen times. For his trouble, he's gotten all sorts of awards from the Heinz Carey Foundation, John Carey's foundation. Uh, his wife's foundation, and this is NASA's lead global warming scientist raking in hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars just in awards on top of other st salary. James, are we starting to see uh, with the rise of the coronavirus pandemic and everything over the last year? Are we starting to see now a melding of COVID activists and the people who would control society uh, through COVID and the climate activists who have been trying to control society through climate? Are we getting set up now for what you might call a COVID hustle? <laughs> yes. Uh, the parallels are unbelievable. Here's what I like to simplify it. We open the film, Climate Hustle 2, uh, with, the, with the COVID climate connection. In other words, if you like 
the COVID lockdowns. You're going to love the coming climate emergency lockdown because they're coming. Joe Biden has been urged by climate campaigners for one of the first acts to declare a climate emergency so he can bypass democracy, much the same way our leaders have bypassed democracy and our legislators and our parliament in order to impose draconian regulation. The parallels are unbelievable. We have a Nobel Prize winning um, epidemiologist, scientist from Stanford, who's being uninvited to scientific conferences because his views on lockdowns, he doesn't support them, are against the public health expert. So you have the same intimidation, the same uh, stripping away of, of credibility to any scientist who doesn't agree. We have the dissenting scientist in COVID signing the, the Barrington Declaration, which is quickly removed from social media. And I go through that with the climate debate. The exact same thing happens. If you dissent from Al Gore, the United Nations view on climate, you are not going to be you're not going to be funded. You're not going to have university positions. You're not going to have social media presence. You're not going to be invited on TV. You're not going to be invited to climate conferences in Cancun and Bali and exotic resorts around the world. The, the parallels are incredible. And even John Kerry, uh, Biden's new climate czar, has said the exact same thing. They're, 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 the parallels are screaming at us. Exactly. And, but I'll say one thing. <laughs> Climate activists are jealous of the COVID, of COVID because it's taken away their thunder. COVID is now the greatest threat to our liberty. COVID restrictions are the greatest threat. Climate and the Green New Deal, the UN, they have been pushed aside, and they're trying to basically now say, oh, climate's going to make viruses worse. They, are, they have been demoted during this whole COVID. Mike, you're absolutely right. Um, your film, one of the things that I found most disturbing was how Al Gore's film, An Inconvenient Truth, actually got into schools. It, there was a court case in Britain yeah. where it was found to be hugely uh, dodgy and, and the facts were all over the place. But your film, which should be in the schools, isn't. I'm just going to play you this quick clip of a girl, a young girl. And this is what really disturbs me, Mark, is how we are terrorising our children. An entire generation have been terrorised by this fear that the whole planet it's about to end in five years or whatever it is. Just have a listen to this girl and see if this isn't child abuse. I just don't know if they're going to do anything. And I just, I'm so concerned with the fact that if they're not going to change anything, then what's going to happen to humankind? What's going to happen to our, what's going to happen to the whole world? Mark, what sort of low life terrorised children in this way and uh, how can we get your film out there so at least there's some kind of counterbalance? Well, thank you. Absolutely. All kinds of low lowlifes do this and all kinds of climate activists uh, have no trouble doing this at all. In fact, they have failed to convince adults of the seriousness that we must act, that there's a climate emergency, so they've targeted children. And in our film, we have a, probably the biggest standalone section is on the indoctrination of children from kindergarten all the way through college they are told they have no future they are facing psychological problems they are facing you know they're trying to skip school they are led by people like greta thunberg and other climate activists telling them that unless they skip school that unless they act and unless they join lawsuits against governments around the world that they will have no future that they want to they need to sue the governments to give them a future a habitable future this is child abuse, as we I quote one of the scientists in, in the film saying it's uh, brainwashing is another word for it. But, you know, pick on someone who's an adult if you want to try to scare them. And they failed to scare them. That's why COVID has achieved what the climate activists have wanted, because a virus scares the hell out of everyone, including adults. Climate seems to only scare children, and that's why they focus on children in the climate debate. So, Mike Morano, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders. Just tell those parents and grandparents and maybe those kids out there where they can see Climate Hustle and Climate Hustle 2. Well, thank you. The film has uh, narrated by actor Kevin Sorbo. It's available at climatehustle2.com, the word or the number, climatehustle2.com. I don't think you'll be disappointed. We have a whole section on Hollywood hypocrisy. We go through all the wacky solutions. We have the professor who wants to shrink human beings physically, <laughs> actually shrink them to lower their carbon footprint. So there's some scary stuff in there. These people aren't joking. Honey, I shrunk the climate denier. Maybe they'll be after that next. Right. <laughs> uh, Mike Morano, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders. Thanks, mate. Thank you. I appreciate it.